Happy Thursday. I hope you guys are doing good. I wanted to give y'all an update. So, everything is moving forward with our moving, our expansion on the store. So, um, I still can't give you guys any explicit details um, because it's not finalized yet, but I'm hoping that we will be closing in the next two weeks. So, I will be able to give you guys all the details, everything, the good, the bad, everything, and I'm going to obviously bring you guys along the journey of getting rid of all this disaster I had. So look, look by me. All this, I had um, 700 pounds of lard delivered yesterday. So it's like literally starting right here and goes all the way down that way. And they're three high <laughs> each stack. And then it kind of even goes around the corner too a little bit. But anyway, um, I desperately need the space. So we are moving forward with that. But one thing I did want to share with you guys in case you're interested is the purchase process of commercial property. So commercial loans and that process is a different process than when you go uh, for like a residential loan. I mean, the process is the same, but it is a little bit different in several ways. Um, a lot of times your interest rates are higher and your terms are shorter so you have uh, less time to pay off the debt um, which all that can be very scary but we're doing it so um, unfortunately we are having to um, to finance this space that we're going to uh, expand into so I, I do want to share with you guys the fact that um, we did have everything set through one bank and we were gonna we, we had done all the paperwork signed everything we were like literally about to have the appraisal done and they gave me the quote for the appraisal and it was going to be sixteen hundred dollars for the appraisal and i was like you gotta be kidding me um i mean i know things are expensive and closing costs are expensive but i was like sixteen hundred dollars for an appraisal jeez like <laughs> that just was so much i just felt sick to my stomach i was like because that was more out of pocket you know you have your purchase price you have your closing cost and an appraisal and we were not going to do an inspection um because the the building is attached to our building and we're kind of familiar with it so we don't really need an inspection um but the appraisal was like sixteen hundred dollars i was like good night so i kind of put the brakes on i told my husband i was like let's just wait and there's a local bank i was like let's try them Let's go meet with them. So we went in person, talked to the guy there, and um, he was like, yeah, we don't do appraisals because we're a local bank um, and it's under a certain price point. Um, I think their cutoff was like a million dollars or, or you know, something like that. It, it's nowhere near that. So he said, since it's under that, we don't require an appraisal. And I was like, well, that's a $1,600 savings off the top and then their closing costs are cheaper. So the other bank, just to do like a comparison, the other bank we were gonna have to do a seven year term. Um, the closing costs were gonna be between three and $4,000 and the appraisal was gonna be $1,600. So just the closing cost and appraisal were gonna be like over $5,000. With this bank, the term is longer. So we're gonna um, do a 15 year term, hopefully pay it off sooner, but we'll at least have the option um, of 15 years. And then the closing costs are only gonna be under $2,000 and then there's no appraisal fee. So my point in telling you all this is to, if you're in a position to buy a commercial space, um, always check with another bank uh, just to get like a second opinion or a second quote because they do vary quite a bit. And, um, and I honestly didn't think they would be that different. I was like, I'm sure it's all about the same. It's fine. But I'm telling you, when I got that $1,600 appraisal fee, I was like, that just seems really high for an appraisal. I mean, <laughs> it's not like that some, you know, big town in, you know, upstate New York that you need to figure it all. I mean, it's a small town, like $1,600 just to appraise the building. Goodness. So, um, yeah, just be aware that, that there are some vast differences in their fees and terms. So, um, 
yeah, I just wanted to share that with y'all so that you would know, in case you didn't know, um, that different banks can be vastly different in, in their fees. <laughs> so, um, okay, so that's part of just growing and learning, right? It's um, the whole process of commercial real estate is just completely different um, in a lot of ways. You know, like insurance is more expensive. Um, they actually charge our utilities at a higher rate since it's a commercial space compared to our house. Like we live in, my building is in the same city in which we live, our house. So the rate that our electricity is charged is higher for commercial. So there is a lot of lot different overhead. And someone had mentioned in my comments on my last video, they asked, um, so hey, cause I was comparing like doing markets, that business style to having a retail store and how much I, I just love having a retail space and how much that has helped propel my business forward. And really I've been able to grow exponentially since I opened up a retail space. Um, but they asked, well, hey, but like as far as your return on investment for retail versus market, how is that, you know, as far as what you have, all the overhead basically. And I probably didn't really go into that in the video, I guess. So obviously without, even having to explain it, you you know that there's a lot more overhead with having a retail space, but it takes money to make money. And that is an unfortunate truth. So my husband and I talk about that all the time. It's like, um, it's really hard to get ahead unless you have something to kind of push you forward, right? Um, Cause if you, if you just stay where you are, you stay stuck. So, but unfortunately it does take usually money, um, an investment of some sort or debt that you can pay back to get you going forward. Um, it's just the truth of the way it is. And so while yes, retail, there is a much higher, you know, overhead, there is a much higher return on your investment. And I'm not saying that that's going to be a hundred percent of the time, but I've seen it to be true. Uh, for example, this weekend, there is a market that I'm doing. I signed up for and um, it was $200 or 250 I can't remember let's just say 250 to do but it's a two-day um, market it is going to be Saturday and Sunday but as I look at the weather like I was telling y'all in my last video um, Saturday is gonna be beautiful but Sunday it's gonna rain all day starting in the morning all the way through now it's only Thursday so yes that could change but still, my point is that Saturday should be fine, but Sunday is a wash, literally. So uh, you pay all this money to go to a market and you're at the mercy of the weather. So I may get, you know, good sales on Saturday, but Sunday I'm not even gonna set up if it's gonna rain. So, um, so yeah, that was the biggest um, downfall to just strictly having your business dependent on markets and craft shows is the fact that you, unless it's an indoor event, you are at the mercy of the weather. And that can really, I mean, you figure all the sales that I was expecting or anticipating to make for Sunday are, are not, you know, it, but like if you're, when you're in a retail space, weather doesn't matter. Now, weather can affect sales, but people will still shop in the rain, in the cold and the heat. So yeah, I did want to address that because that person had asked me that. And so um, I can't remember the specific question, but it was basically on the return of investment, um, all the overhead with retail versus markets. So yeah, with markets, there's expense, but it's not a recurring expense. You know, like you, I pay my 250 bucks and I'm done. I don't have to pay it again next month or the next month unless I sign up for a craft show. So there's a lot more um, uncertainty with retail. So unless you are 100% ready um, to make that leap, I, I don't recommend it. And, and I say that I wasn't 100% ready, um, but I think you have to know that your business is ready because you personally will probably never feel ready, but you'll know that your business is ready. Um, and you'll just know, you, you will know because you will have the demand, you'll have the sales to back that up. Um, and I'm not saying that that equals success, but I do feel that when your business is ready, you kind of have to take that leap of faith for your business because it's really hard for to personally feel ready because it's scary, it's intimidating, 
it's uh, a financial burden or can be. So yeah, it can be really scary. Uh, so I had something else I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I don't remember what it was though. Mm. Um, yeah, I'll have to probably edit this because I want to be stuck here in thought and I can't remember what I was going to say. Mm. Oh, oh, I do know what I was going to say. We were going to talk about um, wholesale and um, consignment. So I'm sure I've done a video on this in the past, but in my opinion, pass up any opportunity to do consignment. And yes, I said pass up, meaning don't do it. Um, if you wanna wholesale, fine. But if you wanna do consignment, I don't recommend it. Um, and if you do wholesale, um, you know, you wanna have wholesale minimums until you've built up or unless you already have a relationship with that person. Because like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure y'all do too, but you have customers that'll spend 300 bucks in your store they're not getting wholesale prices. So you don't want someone who is getting your wholesale prices to come in and spend $60. You know what I mean? Um, unless you've built up relationships. Like I've got some, a couple of wholesale accounts that like if they needed 10 soaps, sure, that's fine. Wholesale price because they've been buying from me for a long time and they buy usually a lot, but if they just need to fill up, that's fine. But you just wanna be cautious of that because you have customers that are spending probably more than your wholesale person, that's a problem. In consignment, the issue with that is those people are not invested in your product. So your product is sitting there on their shelf, um, it's getting handled, getting damaged, getting kind of ratty looking because it maybe has been around for a month or three. Um, and they don't really care whether it sells or not because they don't have anything invested in your product. Whereas if they buy it from you wholesale, they have money in that product and they want to move it. But those are just my two cents. So I've kind of learned that the hard way. I knew it and I did it anyway here recently, but I just recently withdrew out of that account that I was doing consignment for. Um, I just, it wasn't the right business model for me. I didn't have time for it. So I do wholesale, but not uh, consignment because it's just not, it's just not an ideal business model, <laughs> you know? And anyway, I'll stop there. So, um, yeah, that was, I was just going to add that, but I will do another video. I got to get my thoughts together. I got to get ready for this craft show that is in two days, even though Sunday may rain. I got to get some stuff ready for Saturday. So I got to get busy. I got to clean up a mess that I always have. And my next video, I will update you guys again. And if y'all have any questions or would like me to help you with anything, I'm happy to do so. And I will get my thoughts together and do a, a more put together video, but I hope you guys enjoyed the update.